There is our line judge. It's time now for the W1 mixed team bronze medal match. It's the Czech Republic up against Japan for bronze. Let's take a look at uh, how the teams got to this stage. Czech Republic uh, beat Korea in the quarterfinals before losing out to China. Japan, well, they beat Italy in the quarterfinals, but they lost out to Russia. A hugely, hugely encouraging for Japan. Obviously, Japan will host the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games next year. And that'll be a fantastic opportunity for these para archers to perform in front of a home crowd if they're at the level. Well... It's time to take a look at Japan and the Czech Republic. Let's welcome them out onto the field of play. Well, mixed teams is certainly exciting. It's a little bit faster than the team matches. Only two archers per team. This is the uh, Czech Republic 20-year-old, 28-year-old Sarka Maslova and the 37-year-old David Drahaninsky. Drahaninsky was the Paralympic champion in Beijing in 2008. He is one of my favorite para archers. He is a fantastic shooter. And I'm looking forward to seeing him perform today. On target number two, representing Japan. And here are the Japanese athletes. 33-year-old Aiko Akazaki. And the 58-year-old Naka Noshitsugu. Yoshitsugu got uh, the bronze medal in the mixed team at the World Championships in 2017. And Aiko, uh, like Saka on the Czech side, is left-handed. So both uh, the female archers in these mixed teams are left-handed. Yeah, it makes for uh, an interesting lineup uh, because the Japanese archers are facing each other. Well, here we go. Japanese archers on the right facing each other and the Czech archers are back to back. Personal preference, there's nothing specified in the rules. I guess it's what they're comfortable with. Well, the range is clear. It's time to go for bronze here in the W1 mixed team event here at the 2019 World Archery Para Championships. The Czech Republic will get us underway with Saka Mozilova. Not a fantastic start. That's the, the worst arrow we've seen so far on this finals field. But without a 50 meter warp range, it's not easy. Well, you can see the two Czech archers having a little discussion about those two arrows. A great 10 recovery from uh, Drahaninsky. Japan start with a seven. A wide start from Japan as well. Of course, the Czech Republic are are talented. They they were the bronze medalists at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. This pair, Mr. Lova and Drahaninsky.
Oh, widespread there for the Czech Republic. Drahinsky in particular looking unhappy with that second arrow of his. He is the world record holder in the division, but he didn't have the best ranking round here in Bosch, and he will go for individual bronze. It's just not quite what he wanted. Oh, can Japan find the middle of the target? With three going very low there for Japan. And that's the kind of arrows that it's really, really difficult to, to bounce back from because there's not really a pattern to them. There's no group with which to move your sights. You just, you need to tighten things up. Yeah, widespread for the Japanese arrows. That uh, one single 10 stands out though, the uh, first arrow for David Dranitsky of the Czech Republic. And they already lead by four. Johaninski is very strapped into his chair, so I know um, when he's trying to shoot, he he's he's not very stable. He shakes quite a lot if he doesn't uh, get strapped into his uh, his wheelchair, and that's why he's permitted to have that kind of cross strap across his torso. Well, a lot of discussion between uh, the two Czech Republic teammates. Uh, if anything, they've probably got uh, more obvious corrections to be made you can see the holes left by uh, the Japanese archers uh, three low and then one up to the right and as Chris said uh, there's no obvious pattern for them to correct and we don't know if uh, the site was moved to that one on the right that's kind of the right height um, but if they were all low then you'd know you need to move your site with that one high right if they were on the same site mark then really it's difficult it's difficult to know what to do and the wind has dropped right off here, so that's not really playing a massive factor at the moment. There's a, a, some rustling in the trees, but it's nothing that will cause arrows to move too much. And more importantly, it's not buffeting the archers, and that's when it really gets frustrating, when you're actually having to deal with wind on your body. Well, there you see the sock. And what, I suppose what's interesting about that is it's blustering for a little bit, there's a gust, and then it just dies off just like that blustering is a strong word to use in this situation I'd, I'd call it a draft it doesn't have to be fast to be gusty second end of the bronze medal match here in the Netherlands Japan trailing by four will shoot first and as you can see Okazaki has an assistant to help load her bow that's much much better from Japan that's that's a relief I would say I'm a big fan of the release aid that Naka's using. It's, it's, it's meaty, it's very metallic, it's, it's chunky. Salova's first arrow landed in almost an identical spot to one of her arrows in the first ends. It's not the ideal spot, but it, it suggests consistency.
Well, commentators curse, I guess, after saying that it was nothing obvious for Japan to correct. <laughs> Whatever they've done between the first end and the second has worked. A 37 for them out of a possible 40. Five. Well, finding uh, the yellow part of the target right at the end there, Dranisky. But uh, 37 playing 28, and this match has turned right around. Japan now leading by five. Yeah, and Musilova will have to find the middle of it quicker if they, if they want to have a chance of getting back in this match, Czech Republic. She's the, uh, the difference here. Well, let's take a look at uh, the arrows in that end. Czech Republic in yellow, Japan in red. Yeah, Japan's a much more in the middle. When you're in the middle, you win matches. Simple as that. Yeah, and a good grouping of the bottom three there. The bottom three arrows are 9, 9 and 10. Very consistent shooting from Japan. Uh, and a, a much wider group for the yellow arrows. Yeah, and that's six to the left and five to the right of both Musilovas. She needs to split the difference. Well, halfway stage of this bronze medal match. It is Japan who have turned things around. They lead by 60 points to 55. And they shot a 37 in the second end. So, of course, this match has decided on cumulative scoring. 16 arrows, four ends of four. Highest score wins the match. Maximum points available are 160. Well, the range is almost clear. Trailing team Czech Republic will shoot first as we start the third end of the W1 mixed team bronze medal match. Well, she shot 21 out of a possible 40 maximum points, Musilova. Now she finds the middle. Damn. That really is very, very much better um, from the Czech Republic. It often doesn't matter how you start a match as long as you finish it well, but it's strong. This is a topsy-turvy match. Japan came into the end with a five-point lead. That's already down to one. Six. That's Musilova's third arrow in the same spot, out to the left in the six. There must be something she's doing consistently that, that's putting the arrow there, which suggests she probably knows about it, and she's trying to, to stop doing it. Thirty-five out of a possible forty for the Czech Republic. Fist bump between the athletes. That uh, last arrow will be subject to a measure.
Well, time was ticking away there. You heard the pressure from the coach counting down. The Czech Republic had the lead after the first end, and Japan had the lead after the second end, and it looks like we're back to the Czech Republic having the lead after the third end. Yeah, it's a question of whether that nine gets marked up to a ten, whether it's a one-point lead or a two-point lead, but uh, this one has swung around. You look at the Japanese scores through the ends, a 23, and then that second end of a 37, followed by a 29. Archers look for consistency. They're not going to be happy with that at all. No, this isn't the best they've shot this week. This isn't the best we've seen out of W1 athletes. But, you know, again, this isn't a familiar stage to them. Being in a finals event uh, at a World Championship only happens every two years, and if they make it. Yeah, well, we can see here that that nine has been marked up as a ten, so three tens and a six for the Czech Republic in that third end, and they lead this bronze medal match by two points. Well, if things go according to the pattern we've seen so far, Chris, Japan are going to win this one. If things go to the pattern we've seen so far, Karen. If. Well, Japan trailing by one will shoot first in this crucial fourth end. Bronze medal at stake. Another one over on that left-hand side. And that, that group on the left is actually quite excellent. So, notionally, the scores are tied up. So, this has come down to just four arrows. Two for Japan, the first one in the ten. Uh, and they will be followed by two for the Czech Republic. Ten when it matters. That's the most important thing, the ten when it matters. Well, another ten now will give the Czech Republic some serious pressure. Again, time ticking away there, and the pressure coming on at Tanaka. 18 over two arrows to win this. Eight. So, David Draninski needs a 10 for bronze for the Czech Republic. Well, 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 not quite enough, but it is a nine, and that means the scores are all level, and we will go to a tiebreaker. Chris, first time today we've uh, got to uh, the end of regulation time, and uh, the scores are all level. So what happens now to settle this match? So each archer will shoot a single arrow, alternating. Um, one, one team, one the other team, and back and forth. The total of those two arrows, the, the highest total, will win the match. And if they're tied on total points, then it'll be the closest arrow to the middle of the target. So, a mini end, sort of. Half an end.
Well, they've cleared the uh, arrows from the target. The uh, agents have recovered those, but uh, the teams get a little bit longer to have a chat and a conversation with each other about what is about to happen because uh, the targets are replaced as well. Just to add to the tension. Yeah, and I think the Czech Republic are quite lucky to be in this shoot off, to be honest. Um, Sarko Musilova hasn't had a good match here. She shot 110, but a lot of her arrows were out to the left. Now, given how consistently she shot arrows out to the left, if I were her, I'd seriously consider aiming out to the right. Because this isn't about shooting perfect form, this isn't about shooting the theoretical best arrow, this is about hitting the middle. Now, uh, my memory's not what it used to be, but I believe Japan shot first at the beginning of the match. Your, your memory might be better than mine. Uh, that is the case. Japan will be shooting at first. But we do know that Musilova has been shooting first for the Czech Republic, so uh, we're going to get a very good idea of how much of a chance they get once she has released that arrow. Yeah, and it turns out your memory is not very good because Czech Republic are going to shoot first and Musilova. And this will be the critical arrow in this match. This will likely decide who takes it. Well, here we go. A tiebreaker to settle the bronze medal match here in the W1 mixed teams. Well, out to the left again, but it is in the red ring. A seven for Muslova. So we switch over to Okazaki for Japan to shoot their first arrow. That is a cracking shot. I think that's possibly an X there. Definitely an X. That, that's the shoot-off arrow that you need. That's, that's great stuff in such an important match. David Draninski has shot so well here. Can he put some pressure on with a 10? Nine. It's a nine, it's not too bad, but 16 for the Czech Republic mean Japan need a seven here to take the match and a six in fact. Given that the, uh, the first hour of Japan is in the X, it's closest to the middle, so all they need to do is tie. Oh, they've done a little bit more than that. What a brilliant finish from Japan. Two arrows in the center of the target, and they have taken the bronze medal here in Sertigenbosch. That really was extremely impressive. Two tens in, in, a, in a bronze medal match at the World Championships, and for a team that is really, really, really looking forward to competing at home in, uh, in Tokyo at the Paralympics next year. And what's more, this match and, and this competition qualified them extra places. So as well as winning the bronze medal, they've also quote, uh, qualified extra quota places for the Paralympic Games. Fantastic stuff, fantastic. Well, there we have it. Confirmation, Japan have taken bronze here in the W1 mixed team bronze medal match at the 2019 World Archery Para Championships here in the Netherlands.